Hello, I'm Susan Simpson, and in this short uh, video, I'll talk a little bit about enmeshment in the context of people with eating disorders. So this is just a hack for when you're working with people with eating disorders and really struggling to uh, get a clear assessment and to identify unmet needs because of enmeshment issues. Uh, you may be aware already about the enmeshment schema. This is where there is entanglement between the parent and the child. Uh, often the child has been unable to separate and develop a sense of separate self. Uh, so there's an inability to individuate. Um, parentification is very common alongside enmeshment. The child is often picking up on the parent's stress and anxiety taking re responsibility for regulating the parents' emotions, often protecting the parents from their own abandonment schemas and other schemas. Through, and meantime, the child is shutting down their own, uh, their own self, really, and uh, developing a range of uh, compliant or detached modes as a way of, of coping with their own, uh, uh, I guess, the, the lack of space for the development of their own self. Often children in this context have a very uh, sensitive temperament. So that, that sensitive temperament that goes along with the self-sacrifice schema. Uh, and therefore, these children are very often uh, more likely to assume the burden of their parents' well-being. Um, and they are highly sensitive to the suffering of others. Pick, they can pick up on the suffering of others at a 100-mile radius uh, and feel ultra-responsible for other people's uh, well-being. Uh, so they, they often assume this role of surrogate caretaker and picking up on the parents' anxieties and struggles, taking responsibility for their well-being, taking care of everyone's needs, and ultimately neglecting their own selves, potentially not even having any real sense of who they are, what their own goals are, where they want to be in life, or this sense that if they do, they're betraying the parent in some way. Uh, often parents either uh, perpetuate this through their own kind of uh, implicit messages. Often it's implicit uh, messages that the, the child is disappointing the parent or hurting, wounding the parent in some way if they do uh, take their own path. Um, in other cases, it's just a case that the, the parents allow the child to take on that role of, of uh, sacrificing themselves and, and potentially reinforce that, um, and that, that that becomes the child's identity. Um, so often in the case of eating disorders, especially anorexia nervosa, kind of self-restriction, self-deprivation can give a sense of control over this implicit uh, sense of deprivation. Sometimes restrictive eating also creates a space for self to exist, a sense of a kind of a boundary from uh, the parents uh, and other people in their lives who they feel are um, constantly kind of impinging on their boundaries, that the, the anorexia provides a, a safe space for them to, to be themselves and not, uh, not accept needs, not accept getting their needs met at the cost of having to sacrifice themselves. I just wanted to quickly put up this slide. This is a really uh, fascinating study by Barbara Bazil and team uh, where 49 inpatients with eating disorders uh, were um, uh, underwent some uh, imagery rescripting, imagery for assessment um, and various other uh, schema measures. Uh, and they found in this study that uh, mothers were perceived as more abandoning and enmeshed with their daughters. Uh, fathers were perceived as more emotionally inhibited and neglecting uh, for their daughters. Uh, so there's this uh, unmet need, these unmet needs around care, nurturance, attachment, um, often this kind of emotional deprivation that is very commonly coexists with, uh, with uh, enmeshment. Um, so Enmeshment is a really, I guess what I'm raising here is enmeshment is a really important issue uh, in often in families with with of people with eating disorders. Um, and uh, so it's something to be aware of that, as I say, the eating patterns create some kind of boundary, creating space for self. Um, they can't say no, they can't create their own path without uh, offending others, but the eating disorder does that for them. 
So what do we do when we're carrying out an assessment with somebody with an eating disorder, with an enmeshment schema, and uh, we keep coming up against, I guess, this sense of, um, uh, I guess, protectiveness around the, the parenting, around the childhood. So it's really hard to get a clear picture where the child might say, yes, but they did the best they could. Um, so, you know, I don't see what the point of this is. Why, why would we look at that? Um, there's a defensiveness around around exploring those issues, a sense that uh, the parent, a fear that the parent might be attacked or hurt by the assessment and, and our understanding of this issue. So we want to be very delicate um, around this issue. We're obviously not trying to blame the parent or blame anyone, but we do want to get a clear picture of what's going on. Um, so one way of doing that is to ask, first of all, about what are the best experiences from your childhood? Start with with what are the good things? What are the things that you really enjoy about your relationship with your parent? What are the, the things that, that you value most? Uh, and then have a look at the, the most difficult issues. Uh, what are the maybe the 10 best and the 10 most difficult uh, memories from childhood? Uh, you might also ask about the parents' childhood. So you go back one or two generations. What did your parents get? Uh, what did they miss out on in their childhood? What would you have loved your parent to have had more of or less of in their own childhood? If you were your parents' parent, what would you have, what would you like them to have had more of? Uh, what did And what did they pass on to you? So what did they give you that they didn't get themselves? How did they improve um, on the parenting that they got? And how did your, your childhood improve? Uh, or how did they try to improve your childhood? Are there any things that they struggled to pass on to you because they didn't know about them? So this might be where we're looking at uh, attunement, uh, emotional presence, uh, containment, uh, that kind of affection, overt affection, touching, care, that those kind of hugs and cuddles and, and that kind of play and spontaneity. Which of these ingredients did the parents struggle to pass on because they didn't get them themselves? So we're kind of looking at in the context of intergenerational patterns, which can ease that um, ease that a little bit and help the person to understand we're not we're not blaming here. The other thing that I I um, made up is this uh, idea of the family chocolate cake recipe. Um, and in this metaphor, we talk about I guess a family cake recipe that has been passed on through the generations. And at some point in history, uh, a key ingredient such as bicarbonate soda or baking soda was not available. Maybe there was a war, maybe there was a famine, maybe there were uh, all sorts of difficult circumstances. That ingredient dropped out of the family recipe and the recipe was passed on with that ingredient missing from then on. The, the recipe still included a lot of rich, wonderful ingredients. Uh, everyone was happy with those ingredients, but the cake kept falling flat and no really, nobody really understood why. Some people just overlooked it. Some people didn't notice, um, but our clients are the ones that that noticed that there was this, this missing ingredient and hence their, their difficulties um, developed on the back of that. So we're really looking at, you know, that, what is that missing ingredient for you? What's that missing ingredient that dropped out of your family? Uh, and did anyone in your family get that ingredient? How can we bring that ingredient back into your family, back into you in specifically, so that you can change that pattern for yourself and for future generations? So we're looking at unmet needs when we're looking at, I guess, this in the context of often in enmeshment, often you know, um, some very positive characteristics, very positive family um, uh, aspects of the family relationships. But uh, at the same time, it's still really important to pick out these tiny invisible ingredients that many of our clients are not aware of that are linked to emotional deprivation, um, especially attunement, containment and emotional presence. So thank you for listening. And I hope that was useful in terms of conceptualizing your own clients.